We have some new additions to the team. 92 Captain Liam Hendricks is here. And not only is he here, but he's up to parallel two, meaning I get the full tier three boost to the pitching. He's already activated as my captain. We have 13 out of 12 pitchers needed to reach tier three. We also have him to parallel two. So that gives every single White Sox pitcher plus 10 walks per nine, plus 15 hits per nine, and plus 15 Ks per nine. And with Liam Hendricks just being the team captain instead of with Paul Konerko being the live series captain, if we had non-live series White Sox pitchers, which I think the only one I can think of right now is that 89 Giolito, who we don't have, but if we did have him, he would get the boost. But that is the important distinction to make between Hendricks and Konerko, because Konerko only boosts live series White Sox, which makes us make some decisions. Because we have more additions to the team. We have 89 Mini Minoso, 83 Yoan Moncada, and 92 Veteran Series Captain Elvis Andrews. But none of them get boosted from Paul Konerko, and not only that, but they take away spots that we would have Live Series cards in there for. And that brings us just to enough to take us away from that Tier 3 boost. We would need to replace one of them with a Live Series player in order to get back that Tier 3. Now for today, we're not going to do it. We're going to use our new cards, but it's interesting to think about, especially with specifically this Yoan Moncada. Now the unfortunate thing is for some reason in this year's game, they don't even let you see other cards of the same player from the lineup screen. So like if I click on third base right here, since I have Yoan Moncada in, I can't even see the live series Moncada in my inventory. And I would love to be able to see that to then quickly be able to compare pair their attributes to see first of all if the 83 is even better than the boosted live series but then also you got to start thinking you know it takes away being down at tier two it takes away five contact and power versus righties and five power versus lefties from the majority of the team so is a better card in one position better than plus five to a bunch of other players these are good things to have to think about this year this is what's going to make this year fun i think but yes Today, we're going to be using all these new players that I got. And the live series guys are still boosted pretty good. It's only taking five away from three attributes. These are everybody's adjusted overalls. You have to go into the pregame lineup screen to see it. So I'm just in a CPU game right now that I'm not going to play. But Dylan Cease is up to a 93 overall just from the Liam Hendricks tier three boost. His live series is an 85. So barely a diamond, but this gets him all the way up to a 93. Lance Lynn, who we're going to use today, he gets up to an 89. Kopech gets up to the equivalent of a diamond, and then Giolito and Clevenger would both be solid at 83. The bullpen gets a lot better. It's still not like, you know, it's still not great, but at least instead of everybody being a bronze, everybody is a silver. And then Hendricks himself is all the way up to a 99 overall. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you do me a favor, hit that like button, and if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button for me. Lance Lynn is on the mound. We're facing an all-world baseball classic team. Okay. He had that uh, Czech Republic pitcher out there. I wonder if he actually only throws 79 max. So this is another game where on paper, or if you just look at the cards as we're matched up, you'd think that I'd be way overmatched here, but that's what's so cool about the captain boosts is I'm really not. And also I might have to try and find a way around having to say the word boosts so many times, because that's a tough one. Tim Anderson at second today because that uh, Diamond Andrews doesn't have a secondary position of second base. I could put him there. He only took a hit down to like a 75 fielding rating, I think, from his normal 80-something. So it's not like he'd be unplayable. But I figured I'd put him in his primary. That was a quick inning. I didn't even realize that was it, but we're already up to bat. Luis Robert, are you serious? He's not going to keep doing this. He can't. Another perfect perfect. That is four homers for him in two games now. And three of them are perfects. And now Konerko, there we go. He still can't get any lift on the ball. But we'll get a base hit. You know, I actually completely forgot. Now I don't. I kind of don't know if I want to adjust. But I was going to try and start setting my PCI anchor up. Did I get under? Well, 
That's not a very good example. I get under a lot of pitches that I don't want to be getting under. So I'm hoping maybe setting this up in the zone might fix that. And well, that is that is the exact reason why. Because that was a fastball up that I feel like if I didn't anchor that PCI, I would have just gotten under. The timing would have been there. I would have been under it and frustrated. But instead, it's another perfect, perfect shot. He's out of here. He's done. Yeah, see ya. Oh, wait, does that mean I can't use Lance Lynn now? Yeah, now we gotta use Kopech, but he's up to an 85 overall with the boost. So theoretically, he should be just as good as Dylan Cease was in the first game. This guy had some 99s. This one we might actually be overmatched in. I also changed my pitching camera because this one looks cooler. Forgot to do that before the last game started. Uh-oh. All right, we're gonna keep him at second, but that's not how you want to start. Oh, Kopech, he might have a better slider than Cease. That was kind of nasty. I might, honestly, you know, let's just keep throwing that because he, he, okay, he did pick it up, but it's a grounder to second. Come on, one more out and we can keep that runner from scoring. Oh my God, yeah. Keep it off speed, keep it off the plate and we might be good. Okay, we take that. That's a, I mean, that's a Tim Anderson special right there. Okay, he walks Luis Robert. That's probably smart. With with what he's been able to do, that's probably smart. Oh, duck! Okay, God. These are virtual people, and that, that scared me. That was right at his head. Paul Konerko coming through with another perfect for us, driving in the run. Are we lagging, or did he, like, quit from a single? Or are we frozen? No, we're, we're, he quit. Okay. 245 now. Man, we went up... 57 in the last one so that's an even hundred i think i wish we could have been the away team like once so we didn't have to keep burning through our pitchers there we go now that it's the third game we'll be the away team no okay that didn't feel good went up 3-0 he threw two pitches down the middle and then i chased that ah he got me there okay you know this guy's throwing a lot of balls, a lot of pitches missing the plate, but that also kind of means that when it hits the plate, it's going to hit in good spots. This is uh, Brandon Woodruff, man. His, it's not like he has a weird release, but it's like tough to pick up the speed out of his release. You know, I don't, I don't really know. I thought I liked this camera angle more, but now it does kind of feel a little too close. It makes me feel kind of claustrophobic. And you know what? That's two games in a row we've given off, given up a leadoff hit with this camera. See what we can do here. Just challenge him with the heat up and in. That works. Okay, you know, I don't understand how this guy had a losing record of three and four because he's not a bad player. I mean, he has two hits, and in that other at bat that I did get him out in, he made some good swings. This could be two with a good turn here. We got it. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to score some runs, though. There we go. I'm a little under it, but it is Coors. So it is going to carry. Eloy goes deep again, too. That's four homers for him. I don't even think he gotten it bad in the first two games. Oh, he wait, never mind. He did get in a bat that first time because Andrews got in a bat and hit a homer. Oh, and this time he's going to ground out to short. Oh, wow. That's a risky one to throw, and it paid off for him. If I'm not fooled by that, that's going to get sent very far. Oh, and that was a good swing, but right to him. We put one on the board, though. We struck first. And then... Oh, come on. Yeah, we're not going to run that down. I really didn't think that was going to get down. And I made a bad throw. Ah... Uh... We hit the cutoff, and we probably get him at home. That runner shouldn't have even been on, though, in the first place, and we all know it. Oh my god, what is going on all of a sudden? He's on everything. He had the exact same kind of hit with a fastball and then a slider. What do I throw him? No, stop it. You can't give him two in one inning. What? What is happening? There we go. Okay, that one is in a catchable spot. Man, if he didn't get those cheesy hits, I think he would have only scored one. Wow, all these fastballs out of his hand. They all, to me, for some reason, look like off-speed. And then it's just 99, 98. 
man i'm still okay so that's what i'm noticing about the difference with the anchor i'm still getting under it when the pitch is lower in the zone but hopefully what is going to change is when he tries to throw a fastball up and i don't normally get the pci up there now i will yeah it's that's not how you want to start an inning you know, there needs to be an in-between. I'm saying it right now. I like the new throwing. I like how it's tougher. But for outfielders, there needs to be a yellow. There should just be a yellow on every throw. Because when it's in the red, sometimes you throw it away. Sometimes it just, like, pulls the guy off the base. And I think that should be what the difference is. If it's a yellow throw, it should pull the guy off the base. And then if you get a red, that's when it gets thrown away. Oh, that was hit on the ground. There we go. That's how the upstairs fastball was supposed to work last time. There we go. I don't know if he's just feeling more comfortable now, but he's starting to swing away. There it is. Luis Robert, you can't keep doing this. I need to get my hands on that better version. I think it's a 95. Oh, and Canerco. I still can't... I don't think I've made a satisfying Canerco swing yet. I know that's a tough pitch to get lift on, but still. No, that's supposed to be a check. At least we got the foul tip. The cheesy foul tip that shouldn't happen. And we end up drawing a walk out of it. Oh, that was a... That was a weirdly good pitch. Even though that's a slider where it was, that was not hung. That might drop in. No, it won't. Man, I could use some cheese of my own. Oh, and Jeter. That one's not cheesy. That's just not one you like giving up. Whoa, what do you throw when he's that early on your fastball? I guess you throw the change up, he times it up, and you turn two. And another ground ball. I'm liking these last couple innings here for the most part. Keeping it all on the ground. Oh, Minoso, that one might tail enough. Yeah, with Castellanos out there in right. Oh, and it took a weird bounce. That's an easy triple. Man, I could have even pushed it. He threw it all the way home. Oh, I would have been in there. No, okay, that'll drive in the run, but I'm, uh, I'm getting tired of all of the check swing attempts that are just full swings. Benintendi with the perfect, where are you going? Where are you going? Would he not have been right there to catch it on the fly if he didn't even move? That's two triples this inning because of bad defense. I'm really curious how that clutch rating works on the back end. I, I don't think they really explained it too well because they said something about some sort of calculation based on contact versus each side. But like Tim Anderson has like 81, I think, contact versus righties and like 111 versus lefties. And that's another check swing attempt that's just letting it fly. But then his clutch rating, Tim Anderson's, is only 68. So I don't know if that just means 68 contact. Or maybe against righties it'd be 68. But since he's so much better against lefties, it's kind of like calculated on the back end that maybe it's a little bit higher. I don't know how it works. But we, we took the lead that inning. I knew that would get him. Nice pitch. Konerko, you gotta get there. We're not giving up another cheesy hit. Thank you. There we go, Pauly turning on that. In on the hands like that. We're gonna get to second. He still can't get any lift on the ball, but if he's gonna hit the gaps, I guess I can't really complain. Oh, man. That was a good pitch. Andrews, that looks like a repeat of earlier. Castellanos won't get there. He actually played it off the wall, though, this time. It's a nice 5-3 to three lead now. Oh, and Moncada, that one's hit pretty hard. Oh, it didn't get over his head. Oh, I, he's going to get there. So we don't drive in the other run. We keep going one at a time. But as long as we hang on to the lead, as long as he doesn't start hitting again, that's fine. Oh, and that's just a perfect circle change. You can't, you can't put it there any better. Oh my god, another one. Another good circle change. Oh, and then he, he's on that one enough to get it over his head. Come on, Andrews. No, I made a bad throw. Oh, and I made a bad throw home. Oh, and I made a bad throw to second. <laughs> 
Oh, there's way too much going on right there. How many errors was that on one play? We realistically could have had an out on any of those throws. They only gave me one. That's generous. All right, this is going to be the last batter for Giolito one way or another. Oh, and Moncada can't quite get there. All right, well, I'm going to bring in Graveman with the idea of leaving him in for next inning. Grounder, let's make a good throw this time, and we got out of it without him taking the lead. But it's all tied again. Okay, four pitch walk to the nine hitter. I'll take that. Okay, we'll take another walk on a 3-2 count this time. Now we have Luis Robert up there. I wonder what his energy's like. I don't want to R2 the guy, but I'm curious. Oh, he's out of energy. He's out of gas. So Luis Robert will take him deep again to the deepest part. Another perfect perfect. You have to be kidding me with this guy. Not only does he have six home runs in pretty much two games, but five of them are perfect swings. He might be the best player in Diamond Dynasty, and I don't even have his better card yet. There it is with Konerko. That one is even more fun for me. Finally, we got some lift on the ball with him. 458. All right, that was a big inning though, but uh, this one's far from over. With basically an all silver bullpen and two innings to go before the ninth to bring in Hendricks. Three straight inside sinkers. He didn't know what to do with that. There we go. Big slider. Two strikeouts for Graveman in the inning. Ah, oh, there we go. Have we gotten through like a 1-2-3 inning? I feel like every time we get two easy outs, he just manages to get a hit. That's, yeah, that's kind of not the pitch you want to throw. All right, we got the pop fly. Still have a two-run lead, but yeah, not safe. We need more offense. Please? Thank you. And we turn it into a perfect, perfect shot. That is destroyed. Oh, my God. Gold Mankata, 461. Grandal, though, beating the shift right in the perfect spot there. What are you doing? Why are you trying to back pick a guy with zero speed and then you throw it away? That's hilarious. Now the double play's gone. Ah, I tried to go the other way with it, but I was under it. All right, we added on one more back. Three run lead. All right, I don't just want to give him the same look with another inning of Graveman, but this doesn't really seem like the best spot to go to a lefty with Bummer. So it's going to have to be Ronaldo Lopez. He is an 83. He's the second best arm in the bullpen right now, but he's got a pretty basic mix. All right, we got him grounding out on a curve. I don't like that he waited back on that. Okay, we're going to hope he's waiting for something fast up and in. I missed the spot. That's still going to work, though. And another one rolling over. I made a good throw that time, and we're out of it. One inning to go to hold the lead. There's almost part of me that doesn't want to score anymore this inning. No, don't quit now. That's no... No, that's exactly what I was just about to say. Don't do it. Don't do it. No, why? Do you, why? That one almost confuses me more than quitting down by one in the first inning. You've already played eight innings of the game. You're only down three. You may as well just play the one last inning and see what happens. Man, I was just about to say too, I, I almost didn't want to score that last inning because I wanted to make sure Liam Hendricks not only got into the game, but came in with a save situation that would have been fun. But now the, uh, the main new addition to the team didn't even get used in that game well even though he was like the main new addition in terms of the player i guess the main focus was more just about the boost that he gives to everybody else and we saw it i mean that last game wasn't the greatest example of giving up seven runs but you load in with those same pitchers unboosted i might have given up 70. Well, that is going to do it for this second installment of the White Sox theme team. We still have a couple of more big names to pick up here, hopefully sooner rather than later. And I plan on doing a completely separate episode for each one. So there's Tim Anderson, there's Luis Robert, there's 
Mankata, and there's Eloy. And at some point in there, we'll mix in that 89 Giolito. So make sure you hit that like button for me if you enjoyed this one and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next episode of the theme team or anything I post. We're making a lot of content this year, guys. It's fun. But thank you guys for watching today. Thanks for stopping by the channel and I will see you next time.